Right, hello Carola. <laughs> hello. Um, should we start by you introducing yourself, please? Yes, so I'm Carola Schönlieb. I work here at the Applied Mathematics and Theoretical Physics Department. Uh, I'm a reader in Applied and Computational Analysis and have a group on image analysis here in Cambridge. How and when did you choose to do mathematics? So, uh, that's interesting. So I went, uh, I, I went to school in Austria, in Salzburg, to a gymnasium, uh, which is like uh, doing A-levels here, I guess. And uh, actually the gymnasium where I was at was specialized on languages, which uh, turned out that I really don't have a talent for. <laughs> Um, so I, I, I was always quite interested in mathematics and I, I, I was just, I, I guess I, I was just uh, reasonably good in it uh, in, uh, during school. So it was a natural choice for me to, to do it uh, as university studies afterwards. Um, when I graduated in school, my, my head teacher then gave me a book as a present, which was uh, uh, Fermat's last theorem from Simon Singh which I read then over the summer and I thought, wow, I mean, this person just spends years of his life proving one, one, you know, very simple statement. And then it turns out that it's like pages of proof that is involved to, um, to verifying it. That left a deep impression on me. And then I thought, okay, so this is really the right choice. Let's just go for it. I'm not a pure mathematician myself now, actually, but, but this was really something that I thought this must be very fascinating if someone spends years on one question. So you say you're not a pure mathematician. Can you explain what your area of mathematics is about? Um, so uh, my background is in partial differential equations. Um, I use in particular partial differential equations and uh, so-called variational methods, which means um, you're minimizing an energy use, uh, optimization problems, basically. Um, I use uh, these these mathematical tools uh, for inverse imaging problems, meaning that um, you have either a measurement of an image or you have an image itself and you would like to extract some information from these measurements. could be, again, an image. So think about image denoising. You're measuring a noisy image. You want to compute the denoised image. Or it could be you get an image, you're not interested in the whole image, but you want to segment certain parts in this image. Or when I, talk, when I said measurements of an image, it could also be that uh, very often in medical imaging, you're not measuring an image directly, but you measure some indirect transform of this image. Uh, in magnetic resonance tomography, for instance, that's uh, connected to the Fourier transform. So you get Fourier measurements, and then you want to reconstruct an image from these Fourier measurements. Okay, so it's basically you have information about an image and you want to extract an image. Yeah. Good. Um, so could you tell us one of your favorite mathematical moments, mathematical experiences? Huh, okay, so I think there, there, there are many in, uh, and very different moments that you experience uh, during your research. I think the, the, really the, 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 the best mathematical moments um, appeared during my research work. Um, maybe the be I don't know if there is really a best one, but uh, what, I, what I appreciate a lot is this uh, process when you start thinking about something and um, it takes you a long time till you understand it. This is often a kind of torturous process because you usually these things so this is uh, you know one of the challenges I guess of being a mathematician is that you 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 are always faced with these really difficult problems <laughs> and uh, but then uh, actually what you know this moment when all of a sudden you 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 get an idea in this process of trying to understand the problem and finding out how, how to solve it to get an idea and then follow this idea through and see that it actually works this is this is this is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, related question: Like, what what are the joys of doing mathematics, and what are the challenges? So, I think the joys are really when you when 
when you succeed. The, these are really the joys. So when you succeed and when you see that uh, what you have done is interesting and also not just interesting for you but for other people. So you go to conferences and you present what you have done and people are excited about that. People read your papers and, and you get emails about, ah, this is really interesting. Uh, have you thought about this or this? So this is something that I, that, that, that I enjoy quite a lot. I enjoy also quite a lot to work with uh, students um, in particular work, in particular doing research with uh, students I like that also a lot so they they in, actually collaborating in general is a, is a is a wonderful thing for me in mathematics because uh, in, especially if you meet people that are on the same wavelength as you are and that are still complementing you so you can uh, discuss mathematics very freely um, discussing mathematics I think is something very personal and you really need to trust the other person bef to, 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 to openly sometimes reveal that you, that you have no idea about it and um, I think only, o only this way you can make progress and actually solve problems but this, this, this collaboration and this personal level about mathematics I like a lot and the challenges the challenges, I think, are um, we, we really have to work on very hard problems. And uh, you need a lot of patience to do that. And you need a lot of uh, confidence, which, which is often not so easy. Um, so you have to deal with the fact that sometimes you you might not be able to to answer a question like that maybe you will answer a question a year after you have started thinking about it maybe you you have still not solved it now and um i think this is something that uh is is challenging for for the person so again on a very personal level because you, um, your research is really your research and it's your, your question and it's you who has to solve it and uh, if you can't solve it you still should you know keep believing in yourself so I think the, the, this, this, uh, this thing with confidence is, is a very important challenge to overcome and to get to know your own strength and your own weaknesses and to really exploit your strength and maybe work a bit on your weaknesses but, but um, yeah and uh, what's it like being a female mathematician in particular? Uh, so there was a time when I especially, so when I did my undergraduate studies, I didn't realize at all that this makes a difference. I thought, uh, yeah, and, and I really never thought about it. Then when I started to do my PhD, um, I, for the first time, was, was sharing an office uh, with another female PhD student. And then I thought, wow, this really makes a difference. It's really nice, actually, to not always be the only one. Uh, I think, so this is... This is one thing I think that we should really pay attention to, to and th th this is one of the key things why it's it's important to increase the number of women in mathematics, because it changes the environment, and it's just nice not to be a singularity all the time. Yeah. 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 Um, and what advice would you give to a young woman that wants to become a mathematician? Um. So an important thing, as I said, is to get to know your strength and to believe in your strengths and um, to ex really accept your weaknesses and don't, uh, don't pu pull yourself down for your weaknesses. I'm, I meet so many uh, female mathematicians, uh, students, and, and also women who, who have already achieved a lot who are still thinking they, and still saying that they might not be good enough. And that's really, this, re this is really killing you if you don't get rid of this. 
if you th and and uh, and and there is no no reason to believe that actually uh, everyone has their strong points and their weak points and I think this is just something that we have to overcome to really focus on the strong points and then just go for it and uh, another th and one other advice I would give is um, uh, planning your career again. Uh, I only have this with women that there is this uh, bad consciousness about, you know, following your career and leaving family behind, which you don't leave family behind. But but just this this point that you have a bad consciousness if you if you want a career. I just yesterday uh, met uh, met uh, uh, an assistant professor uh, in in Switzerland. Uh, who is a woman and who her her husband uh, has been taking care of their child for the last two years so he was the one who stayed at home and she said she still has a bad consciousness because of that and um, yeah just just get rid of the bad consciousness <laughs> yeah. okay well thank you very much <laughs>